Welcome everyone to Apple Insider. It is not every day that we get to unbox and look at a new generation of Macs on this channel. And we could not be more excited. We've been wanting to talk to you guys about this thing for a while now, but we've been testing the new M1 13 inch MacBook Pro from Apple for just under a week now. And we have a lot of thoughts. So in this video, we're gonna walk through this machine, unbox it, talk about it, everything you need to know, but we're also gonna point you guys to our other video that we already did, a comprehensive, in-depth benchmarking video, 10 or so minutes long, comparing this to five other Macs, as well as our iPad, as well as our iPhone, pretty much everything you need to know in terms of performance of this machine. So we'll touch on a little bit in this review video, but for real performance stuff, check out the other one. Otherwise, let's dive in to the 13-inch MacBook Pro late 2020 with Apple's M1 processor. The new MacBook Pro is outrageously fast and stunningly power efficient. It was honestly hard for us to test the battery claims on this thing because it was so long and we had such a limited time to do it. But basically, in our normal use, we are easily making it through pretty much our entire day. This thing last almost longer than we're awake during the day. It is just incredible amount of battery life in the same small body that you had before. Now the big deal here is of course the M1 chip and we're gonna get to that. But first let's go over kind of the general details of the machine. And it feels like you've already seen this MacBook Pro before. That's because you largely have. The design of this thing has not really changed. It's the exact same body that we saw with the previous generation 13 inch MacBook Pro. Apple didn't really work on the design in this part. They really focused on those internals, including the M1 chip and a few other details. When Apple made this machine, it's almost like they designed it for our pandemic initiated work from home era. They've actually made improvements to a few things that make it nicer to work from home. Things like the camera. Apple's still sticking with that 720p camera on here, but Apple has worked on the new ISP included in that M1 processor that greatly improves the quality of that video. Dan and I took several FaceTime calls or Zoom calls or Slack calls, whatever you wanna call it, but video calls, and we compared our lighting in several different situations. And as you can see in these sample shots, there is a drastic difference in the quality of the light uh, on the M1 chip versus our previous Intel-based Mac. It's really just that ISP. The camera sensor's the same, just looks a whole lot better. Then again, it's still a 720p camera. We look at it and go, wow, that's still 720p, but it's better 720p. So it's definitely an improvement for working from home. Speakers aren't changed all that much. Apple says there's those three studio quality mics, and in our testing, the mics do sound solid. Never really had any issues with those. The other thing we talk about here is, of course, macOS Big Sur. Big Sur is a huge update, and of course, we have covered this copiously on other videos. So if you wanna learn more about Big Sur in general, go check that out. But what was really cool with the new MacBook Pro is just kind of the overall experience. Now that we have Big Sur and we can run our iOS apps on our Mac, at least a lot of them you can, it's almost like a surreal experience. It's like our iPad is coming to the Mac. We just have incredible performance there, and these apps feel snappy and zippy, and they feel right at home, for the most part, here on the Mac. Some apps don't really make sense, but there's a lot of uh, graphics ones like, oh my gosh, Darkroom is incredible here on the Mac. And a few others that we played around with, some recipe apps, all were very much welcomed on our new Mac. And they launch incredibly fast. Now there are really three types of apps for the new M1 Macs and Big Sur. So first you have universal apps. These are apps that run natively on both Intel and the M1 processor. Then you have apps that are running in emulation. These were designed for the Intel processors and they use Rosetta 2 to run an emulation here on your 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 processor. The only real difference you note between these things is native apps can run faster, but you don't really know when you're launching an app if it's a native app or if it's running an emulation. The only way you really know is on first boot up, apps that are running in emulation using Rosetta 2 take about 10 to 20 extra seconds for that first boot time. When they're booting for that first time, it's basically spinning up Rosetta 2, getting everything ready, and then running into the app. But the second time you launch it, it's instantaneous. Check out this demo here that we did. When we first launch Pages, the Intel version of Pages, it takes a good 10 seconds or so to kind of boot up for that first time as Rosetta gets going. But once we run it for that first time, after that, it is snappy as heck. 
Of course, Pages has already been updated for the M1 processors, so that's just an example that we had because the original version came installed on our machine before the M1 update was released. This is all very confusing, but it is a little bit easier to understand when you realize there are three types of apps. There are the universal apps that run natively on each, there are Intel apps, and then there are the iOS and iPad apps that are getting ported over. The only thing you really need to be concerned with is whether or not your software works on the M1. And honestly, it's hard for us to tell you that through this video, because we don't know. We don't know the apps that you're using. If it's a common app, then it's probably gonna be okay. If you're worried about, you know, Pages or Word or something like that, those guys are coming. Even Adobe is offering day one support for Lightroom or for Photoshop in beta form on the M1 Max. That's pretty incredible. And of course, Lightroom and everything else from Adobe will be coming down the line very soon, even if it's not here right now. And even then, they can still run an emulation. And at least in our test, emulation is pretty darn solid. We just can't guarantee support for every app that's out there. And the only way you're really gonna know is if you test it yourself. So what about benchmarks? At least the couple that we're gonna talk about in this video, including our real world experience. We're gonna talk about using Geekbench and its kind of general scores. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about the disk speeds in here. But before we do that, we do have to thank our sponsor for this video, Nebia. So we've talked about this before. Nebia has sponsored our videos before and I could not be more grateful, but I'll say it again. For the people who were familiar, I just bought a new house and anyone who has bought a house knows the insane amount of work that goes into it. I had a huge list of things that my wife and I needed to get done in this house, uh, finishing the basement and working on the outside and landscaping and blah, blah, blah. But one of the first things that was on my list to do was upgrading our bathroom. Our bathroom was garbage and I hated our shower head. It was clunky and had a small radius and just was a terrible experience overall. And I had been following Nebbia for the longest time since their original Kickstarter, but their original products were fairly expensive. But their new product, Nebbia by Moen, ticked all the right boxes. This thing looks incredible. Look at these product shots right now. It just looks amazing in any shower. Easily gonna elevate that experience just from looks alone. But the actual experience of using a shower is on a whole nother level. It can save you water, but completely fills your room with a spa-like experience. It feels so warm, and especially as we're heading into winter, I do not want to get out of my shower because it is just so warm and amazing in there. It really feels like you are at a spa. I love the new Nebby by Moen Showerhead. I am so glad they've dropped the price from when the original ones were at $500 and the new ones start at just around $200. They have the new wand and the wand can work at the same time as the shower head, which gives you a more, more coverage in your shower. It is absolutely incredible. And Nebbia seriously never does this, but they're giving us a discount code. So if you head to nebbia.com slash AI and use promo code AI, you can get 15% off anything you buy from Nebbia, including the new Nebbia by Moen. The first 100 people to use that code will save 15%. So act fast on that because the slots are going quickly. If you wanna do that, you can follow the link down below in the description. And I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know down below in the comments. Other than that, let's get back to our benchmarks. So if we check out our Geekbench benchmarks, you can see that in the single core test, the new M1-based MacBook Pro absolutely blows the others out of the water. And it gets even more incredible when you're not running Geekbench in emulation. When you're running natively on the M1 processor, it goes even further in the single core test. In multi-core, it performs not quite as good. It still blows away almost every other Mac that we compare it to, and we'll talk about more in the other video. But that is absolutely incredible. This is not your 15% bump from Intel year over year. This is a genuine huge leap forward in these processors. What that actually adds up to in our daily use of this machine is just an incredible zippy fast machine that I've almost never experienced before. It feels like it's coming from the future. This is not your normal machine. It was so bizarre how it boots up so fast, how apps launch so fast. Everything just felt seamless. I could not believe that it was actually using um, a Mac. It's that incredible. And because that single core test is so optimized, that's what Apple was really going for here with the M1. This is their first try, an M1 processor for mainly the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro 13 inch. So it's really focused on efficiency and battery life. Those are what you're getting here. So the fact that the single core tests are so incredible on such a power efficient chip, imagine when Apple is out with the M2 or focuses on the 16 inch MacBook Pro or a Pro desktop or the Mac Pro, anything like that, where they're really putting extra emphasis on the graphics and multi-core performance. 
it is, it is going to be absolutely insane. So we are getting great performance here. And because everything is so quick, so even though my Mac Pro won on the multi-core tests, this thing won in all those single core tests, which means using this machine feels faster than my Mac Pro. This thing, and even the MacBook Air, feel faster than using my Mac Pro because everything from launching apps to booting the machine to navigating around Safari, everything feels faster than my Mac Pro. The only time this felt like it was behind is when I'm doing a high-end video in code, I'm compiling something in Xcode, I'm doing anything that is really heavy on the graphics side because that's where the Mac Pro, those multi-core performance benchmarks, that is where the Mac Pro shined rather than the Apple M1. But still, for actually daily use, this is mine, uh, this is mine now, I would like this and I'm going to continue to use it. So that was a big deal. The other deal is with the internal SSDs. Apple focused a lot on their SSD controller, their storage controller. This is, and I, I keep using the word literally because I don't wanna mean figuratively. I mean literally has doubled the speeds of the SSDs in these machines. The SSDs were not slow before, but with the new M1 processor, Apple has literally doubled the speed of the storage in these machines. Again, it's absolutely incredible that this is happening. It feels like what Apple is doing is building a whole new Mac, but they're doing it piecemeal. First, we got Mac OS Big Sur, which brought that radical new design and aesthetic to the Mac, as well as a bunch of improvements. Then we got the M1 processor, which did so much more. It made storage incredibly quick. It improved the quality of the cameras and it made everything in the machine blindingly fast. But the one thing that we're still missing is the actual Mac itself. The hardware still is the same Mac that we've had for years. Now don't get me wrong, this is a pretty solid looking design. I mean, look at this thing. For as old as this is, this is a good looking Mac. If you look at a years old PC, you can tell. But these new Macs, they still look incredible even years later. They just feel maybe a little dated from when they originally debuted. There's no fault in that, just getting a little older. And Apple is surely working on some incredible new hardware. We just don't have it yet. So it's like we're two thirds of the way through an incredible new Mac. So right now, at this point in time, I have no reservations telling people it is safe to jump to this. Everything we've tested on it has worked well. Rosetta 2 has been solid. The native apps are fantastic. The only reason I would say hold off is one, you wanna see Apple's new hardware that is likely coming in 2021. You wanna see the rest of the whole new Mac, or you're just worried about your software and you wanna make sure everything there is there when you need it, including the rest of the Adobe suite or any niche software that you have yet to test and you wanna get more information on before jumping. Otherwise, this Mac is incredible. Apple software is optimized for it. So much software is already optimized out of the box. And it is shockingly fast that we still can't believe it after almost a week of using the machine. The new MacBook Pro is a killer. We love it. If you wanna grab one for yourself, you can find the links down below in the description. We've already started compiling the best deals out there on these new machines. Of course, if you wanna check out Nebbia, get that 15% off code. The first 100 people to use that code will save 15%. So act fast on that because the slots are going quickly. So follow the link down below, nebbia.com slash AI and use code AI for 15% off. Otherwise, let me know what you guys think over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU.